Today we'll look at my A1200 that I've owned since 1993 and add in once again CD-ROM support. So around 1996 I was lucky that my parents bought me a CD-ROM upgrade for the Amiga. It was a SCSI squirrel interface similar to the one that's pictured. I still have the CD-ROM but sadly during a move I must have got rid of the SCSI cable and these are quite difficult to find nowadays. But there is an alternative. I have today the 4X EIDE buffer interface which you can get from Amiga Kit and other places. It allows you to plug in 44 pin IDEs as well as the 40 pin that you normally find on the Amiga 1200 and a friend at work has given me an IDE DVD drive uh, that's in a caddy. For power I used a Molex to AC adapter which allows you to run a CD-ROM drive from the mains. So I still have some rounded IDE cables lying around and as you can see it means that the case doesn't quite fit uh, as it should do. So I need to work on a solution for the future, maybe some flat IDE cables may be better or removing the RF modulator which will give me some room to route things around maybe. So I plug the IDE cable into the secondary channel and make sure that the, that the CD drive is set to slave with its jumper. On the Amiga I'm using better workbench and I have installed an IDE buffer software. It's a simple installer and it adds an icon in the preferences. One tip if you're doing something similar is I had to use CD3 mount uh, when going into uh, devices and DOS drivers as uh, the CD3 matches with Unit3 which is uh, the secondary channel slave where my drive lives. So this is my collection of Amiga CDs that I have left. I have some Amiga format CDs uh, but also have CU Amiga cover discs as well which I always preferred really they just seem to cram more stuff on their discs with loads of demos, music, programs. Um, I have the first CD-ROM of um, pretty much the CU Amiga they're called the Mega CDs and also the Amiga format CD also have Aminet CDs which were very useful before the days of the internet. Also PD collection CDs, these, allow, these allowed you to access so much software and games and transfer them to floppy disk. So let's give it a try and put a CD in and see what happens. And as you can see we are accessing the Aminet 8 CD on my Amiga after probably about 20 years. It's great. You can browse the contents of the CD and this is very similar to the structure of how Aminet is to this day really. In a future video I'll be looking at a way of accessing ISO images for those that don't have access to a CD-ROM. So watch out for that video soon. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you wish to see more. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.